In this demo, I want to show you how to use SQL Server Profiler to capture deadlock graph information from SQL Server. I'm running SQL Server 2012, but this demo will work on all versions back to SQL Server 2005. To start off with, we have three scripts open inside of Management Studio. One is our setup script, and then we have two additional scripts that we'll use in a minute called Select and Update, and these are our processes that are actually going to trigger our deadlock. Our setup script is going to create a database called Deadlock Demo, and inside of that database, we're going to create a table called Key Lookup Deadlock, and then we're going to load that table with a thousand rows of data that are distributed in a manner so that we get key lookups when we actually create two indexes. And what we're going to create is a clustered index on column one and then a non clustered index on column two. And when we do a query using column two as a filter predicate, as done in our procedure key lookup select, um, here where we're doing a, a where call two between the values that have been passed into the stored procedure and the value plus one, we'll actually get a key lookup that makes the execution engine have to go back to the clustered index to retrieve the row. And then our last procedure that we're going to create is our key lookup update procedure, which is going to do updates of the data inside of the key lookup deadlock table, and that's going to allow us the cross-locking scenario to actually trigger the deadlocks. Now we're going to go ahead and run this so that it sets up the database, and then we're going to switch over to SQL Server Profiler. And in Profiler, we're going to create a new trace and connect to our server. We're going to select a blank template, and then we're going to go to Event Selection. And in Event Selection, we're going to expand locks and then select the deadlock graph event, and then run our trace. And with this running, we can go back over to Management Studio. And what we'll do is we'll start our two processes. So our first process is our select process. And it's just going to run inside of a tight loop. And it's going to execute our key lookup select stored procedure. And it's going to insert the results into a temp table and then truncate the table. And then our update process is just going to execute our update stored procedure repeatedly inside of a tight loop. And the reason that these run inside of a while loop is that there's a, a timing factor associated with the locks. And as you can see, we've just triggered our first deadlock by running our select procedure. And the select statement in this case is always going to be the one that gets selected as the victim because it has the only thing that it has is a number of locks. It hasn't made any changes to any data, so there's no log records that have to be rolled back to actually kill this process. And if we run this again, we'll get another deadlock. And if we run it again, eventually we'll, we'll every time that we run this, it will eventually be selected as a deadlock victim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the update process, and then we're going to go back to SQL Server Profiler. And as you can see, we have three different deadlock graphs that are selected here. Um, and this is the deadlock for each of our events or each of the deadlocks that we triggered using the stored procedures to actually create the deadlocks. Now, if we look at our deadlock graph information, you'll notice a couple of things. One, in the text data column, we have our XML deadlock graph information. In our display window at the bottom, where we would typically see what the text data is, we don't get that with a deadlock graph. Instead, we get a graphical representation of what the deadlock is. And you can always tell what the victim process was in the deadlock graph by the X. It's going to be whatever process has been crossed out. And in this case, if we hover over it, we'll see the tool tip that I talked about in the slides that shows us what was actually being executed when we got the deadlock information. Now, we also have our resource information in the center in the two boxes. We can see that we had two key locks. We can see what the object name was that the, the key lock was on, and we can see what the indexes are here. So we have index one, which is going to be our clustered index, and then index two, which is our non-clustered index. We can also find out which process had which locks. So in this case, our select process owned a shared lock on our non-clustered index, and our update process was requesting an exclusive lock on our non-clustered index. At the same time, our shared or our select statement was requesting a shared lock to do the key lookup against the clustered index, while our update process already owned an exclusive lock there. So this shared request gets blocked by this exclusive request, and this exclusive request here gets blocked by the shared ownership here. 
This is what leads to the deadlock in this scenario, and this is how Profiler can help you with identifying or troubleshooting what's going on with deadlocks inside of your SQL Server.